Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. Thank you, in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. A soldier in the army Put me on the front line In the army of the Lord Put me on the front line In the army of the Lord Put me on the front line In the army of the Lord Put me on the front line In the army I'm a soldier In the army of the Lord A soldier Army of the Lord, got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord, got my sword and shield in the army of the Lord, got my sword and shield in the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Soldier in the army of the Lord be with you again and let's just pray mighty father we give you praise and we extol your name there is no god like you never can be no way no how we pray that your holy spirit will have free course here in the mighty name of jesus to bring clarity and insight in jesus mighty name and that i would decrease that you would increase all of you and none of me be it so in jesus mighty name hallelujah well last time we left off we were talking about what it means to 
be in God's presence and what it also means to be in the secret place of the Most High. There is no better place to be and the level of protection that God would give his angels charges over you to keep you in all of your ways. It means something to be at a relationship and a fellowship with God as Isaiah 44 and 26 lets us know that he would confirm the word of his servant and perform the counsel of his messenger. That is certainly a very good place to be. And we had talked how uh, those who had spoke things, God confirmed their word, which means we have a level of stewardship in words that we, in what we say, how we say them, because those words do carry, they carry weight. And that's the thing that we need to be aware of. We talked as we left the last time about when we're actually in relationship with God that there is a place, I believe, 1 John chapter 3 and I believe 3 and 6 talks about it. And what it was trying to get across, there is a place that when we're in fellowship and whenever we're walking in the spirit, we cannot sin. It is when we are walking in ourself, when we are operating in our flesh nature, when we are operating on, from that perspective, when we began to lean on our own understanding, and those are the areas where we, when we're operating outside of the Spirit of God, we will, we will make Yes, we will sin, but there's a place where we mature, where we are, if we become so aware of what it means of such a great blessing. So no one that abides in him, no one that comes to know him in the real, is, is no way, you're not going to keep sinning. You're so awed by this great privilege that you're not going to keep sinning. Anybody that has come to know God in the real, and if they keep sinning, it validates that they really didn't come to, there's a lot that they don't know about God. They really haven't come to know him in the real because whenever Christ comes in, if he's really, that's the thing that validates is that your eyes come open, your mind come open, your heart, and it is so much joy, it's so much peace, there is so much clarity and understanding. And, and it's, to explain it is that there is no pleasure, it becomes repugnant, it becomes distasteful, anything that displeases God, you want no parts of it. But then you may ask that question then, well, I really want to be saved. I really want Christ to come into my life, but all these things that I'm trapped with, I, I can't, I, I, I don't have the strength to stop that. I, uh, I've tried it. Well, there is something when you commit with your whole heart and you allow Christ to come in. It's not something you try. It's something that the Holy Spirit will do in you when you sincerely liberate and, and surrender and confess your sins and ask him in. You do become a new creature. And everybody that I've known that have come to know God and the real, it requires them letting go completely and confessing and asking Christ to come in and first of all being aware why you need to confess I mean and hopefully in some of these lessons in the past we understand that we all stood there in the death penalty line without hope and once we come to the realization that we're existing and not living and we hey I want what's supposed to be mine. I want life. And whenever you make that decision by confessing your sins and undoing what our 
first law that Adam had placed upon all of us. That's basically what we're doing. And we're reconnecting with the Father. Whoa, what joy, what uh, wholeness. And every person that comes into that realization, they didn't know they were carrying this weight and this condemnation on them. And the moment they literally let go and really sincerely with their heart allow and ask Christ to come in and to forgive them of their sins and they lay hold on their inheritance and it's not so much of, of words being specific but understanding the process and the principle of asking Christ into your life because he is the only door and then in addition to asking him into your life as being Lord of your life he's the one that reconnects you back to the father and what an awesome a privilege that is and I, I see why it is joy unspeakable and it is such an awesome privilege so obviously all the forces of the enemy will try with all effort for you not to be aware of that and the beauty that I enjoy so much is since it is not linear nobody can stop you once you understand this and once you invest in it and as I so often have, have shared with agnostics or atheists if you would spend the energy in reading the word and uh, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man and and it states there that I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent a lot of things that we're trying to or we're arguing about and with all the statistics and geology and archaeology and all of that none of it can compare to what it means to have fellowship with God and it is it, it is that, that's what I like the blind man that was once blind born blind in, in John 9 and one thing once he got his sight nobody could take that away from him all the pundits argued about how well how did you get your eyesight and well a man is a sinner and you did it on the wrong day you brought your sight but <laughs> all the blind man can say was that the man that was once blind, well, I don't know who he is or what he is. All I know, and you all couldn't help me. <laughs> and uh, this, he, he, I followed simple instructions, and now I come away seeing. And the truth of the matter it is it, that the, the, the simplicity of, of what God has made so available, it is mind-blowing. And it is foolishness uh, to the world. And, and the world can't contain into this. What do I mean by that? When we try to use man's wisdom, logic, and insight, and history, science, whatever, it will never nowhere come near to understanding the great creator of all the universe. That's one of the reasons why we can take his word and, and, and his word gives us insight. There's no way that we could have ever known. And not only that, but the foolishness. What do you mean? The foolishness through preaching. What do you, what do you mean? It is actually the content of this word. How can such awesome breakthrough and revelation becomes available through something for the pundits, for the educated, for the, the those that are wise and spent years in, in study, and yet a simple person that could take the word of God and immerse themselves in this is, is able to do and able to live and able to enjoy that balance those that's why he says I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent and that is also why we see in also in Isaiah where he shares that as well that he is and turneth the wisdom of the wise, and turn back. In other words, to do, can you imagine what that's like? <laughs> Where the wise men is 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 lost. Uh, those with wisdom, how turn it backward, and and so they're lost. They don't understand. How can that be? And and but that's the kind of when you actually come to know God. It, that here is a simple person. Do not matter about what. Uh, well, maybe you didn't go to college. Maybe you didn't get all the degrees. But when you really submerge yourself to come to know God in the real and by asking, when you acknowledge him, any man need of wisdom, any man need of understanding, is to think that wisdom and knowledge can come just by you asking your heavenly father once you've connected to him. Whoa, that is awesome. And I'm, I'm here as a witness in every aspect of your life. 
it is that is made available physically, mentally, and spiritually that you that you can ask your heavenly Father, and He will give that wisdom. He'll give that insight on. on things animated and inanimated things that you want to know and understand and that is an awesome privilege so when you really come to know him it's when you really is in his presence when you really is in his secret place you cannot sin so the goal of the enemy is for you to never get there because he wants you to be in yourself he wants you to try to figure it out he wants you to use your own wisdom he wants you to use your own five senses he wants you to lean upon your own understanding and i can guarantee you that will be your headache and that will be your headache and that has always been man's kind headache rather than to and the lord i thank god our heavenly father has made this so simple that uh, so simple that oftentimes those in their wisdom misses it and that's why paul says not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and things that are base and things that are despised yea and things that are not those are the things that god has chosen why that none that no man should glory in his sight so the foolish things of god is 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 wiser than man. And God decided to use something simple. The, the preaching of the gospel, the, the sharing of the fact that his son took on flesh. Who's going to believe that? And, and matter of fact, in Isaiah 53, he asked that question, say, who has believed our report? And there are so many awesomeness. How can something this awesome be for free? All, all it is 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 by you connecting with your heart and your mind and a whole new life open up for you is so amazing. We're looking over the content of this. So when you really connect and this is what first John three and six talks about that. Uh, so when you actually connected, born of the spirit, when you're really living in him and when you're in his secret place, there's no way you can keep on sinning. And uh, so a person that keeps on sinning, and, and granted you, what I'm saying is because any person that really comes to, to know God, you know, whenever you're out of step in fellowship, you don't feel good about it, and you're quick to confess and get things right, and you, and not only that, but you board up, you repair all those areas that created those places in the first place. Now, John, First John, it tells us that if we say we have not sinned and we've lied, what is he saying? What is he saying that every person born, even if you don't practice sin, we had that curse upon us. But once you accept Christ into your life, the curse is removed. And now we have to take the second step, which is now to keep diligent that which God has given to us and that nobody steal that. And we have and He will give us the power and the strength the more you hunger and search after him. And because he gives power to the faint, to those that has no might, he increases strength. Listen. It is not in our power. So usually when people say, well, I really want to, but I don't want to play with God. Those are tricks of the enemy. And, and I, I really want to, but I, I, I all, when you totally liberate and allow him to come in, it won't be you doing it. It will be him doing it. And that is the mystery. Every one of us that testifies this, it wasn't because of our goodness, because uh, all of our goodness and our righteousness, uh, whatever good acts we have before we accept Christ in, they will never get us will never bring us into fellowship with God so we first got to get through the door we first got to have the license we have first have to have the access first have to have the ticket and that only ticket comes through Christ through the very word that became flesh and there is no other religion there is no other denomination there is no other access there is no other door the only way that you can come to the father is having to recognize that the word took on flesh to give access so we could be restored everything that we've lost that we could now no longer just exist but can reconnect to life and that is such an awesome privilege so there is no other name whereby that we can be saved except through the acknowledgement of emmanuel except through the acknowledgement of, of the word made flesh except through the, the acknowledgement of of Christ our Savior uh, Jesus yes so when we understand that he is the only access so this is what John was saying when he was saying that whenever we're in him you can't sin it's only when we get into ourselves that 
we are certainly miserable failures. And of course, that's where the enemy always wants us at because we're exposed. But when we're in the secret place of the Most High, we can tread upon the lion and the adder. And we can trample the young lion and the dragons under our feet. So, yes, uh, and I, I can understand why all of the investment in the enemy is to to stop you from knowing that and the beauty that I, that I enjoy is that it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter where you've been it doesn't matter all the blunders and mistakes you may have made in ignorance you're never too uh, low there's nothing god specializes in 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 in, in, the, in bringing and restoring and setting on high those that may be abased or despised god specializes in that and that's what makes it even more beautiful despite all the blunders and all the attacks and maybe your mother wasn't there maybe your father wasn't there and maybe all kinds of ills that have happened in your life and maybe your life has been or term off from the time that you were born but if you were hearing this message today if you would accept him and come in and really pour your heart and mind and seeking after him a whole new world a whole new world of, of joy peace and insight will open for you that it's, it's just unbelievable it's like mind blowing I understand why Paul says eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard and haven't entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him and there are some things that once you come to know uh, yes there are all kind of liars out there wants to steal from you once you accept Christ into your life and there will be a, all kinds of forces that wants to pull you off and in all kinds of direction and but I'm, I'm really encouraging you when you really get into the word Psalm 1 talks about meditating upon his law day and night that's how you become unmovable. Meditating upon his law, those principles of God, meditating upon them day and night. So you'll be like a tree that's planted beside the rivers of waters that shall bring forth its fruit in its season. And it leave also shall not wither. And whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. So one of the things here, let's, as we're looking at this, there is, when we, it talks about, I mean, all, obviously, transgression, all transgression is sin. And so looking at that, I want to just read a few scriptures here for you. And this is from the King James Version, the Numbers 15 and 31. Because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment. Listen, God has given us, and when, we, when you accept him into your life, there's a covenant agreement. And as long as you keep your part, God will always keep his. And, and so there's a lot of, of, of untruth that is spoken about uh, God. It's, there's a lot of untruth that is spoken about grace. And hopefully we will be able to talk about some of the content of those things that are spoken about grace that, that really don't fit the content of God's word. And as you really begin to study God's word, and, and when there are parts that you don't uh, understand, that clarity can come as you really begin to ask the Father and seek to the Father and ask for answers on that. And he will not withhold any good thing from you. And there will always be other scriptures to support the, the uh, through the through the mouth of two or three witnesses and so there's always support in the word to confirm what he's talking about and as you really begin to, to uh, liberate as your mind become free and you really begin to talk to the Lord and he will certainly give uh, that's what he desired to do he desired to give you wisdom desire to give you insight and that's why it is so important when we acknowledge him in all of our ways says he will direct our path so there's a, there was so much more we want to talk about here as we're, we're, we're talking about when you're actually in him, that uh, when you're actually in that secret place, so you, you cannot sin. It's only when we get into ourselves. And so I realize that we'll, we'll continue this. There's another part of this we want to talk about grace because there's, there's all kinds of misconception and untruth that's talked about grace that will allow people to put their guards down. And if once you've come to know God, I want you to be fully capable of being able to withstand whatever storm comes at your life. So I, I want to encourage you uh, to, to make that decision and to stand upon it. Being with us today, and we will continue where we left off from, and so until next time.
this time we want to offer prayer for those of you with special prayer requests we're going to touch and agree and God is going to do it so wherever you are whatever that special prayer request are those of you that have called and those of you that have called based on the number on the screen we're going to touch and agree where you are and God is going to do it Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for this opportunity that we have that we can boldly come to your throne and make our requests known. Thank you, mighty Father, that your eyes is upon the righteous and your ears is open to their cry. That whenever the righteous cry, you hear it and you deliver it out of all the troubles. We pray now that every shackle be broken, every wall come down, those wherever they are in their homes, wherever they are, on the jobs, in the cars. Healing come forth now. Deliverance come forth now. Breakthrough come forth now. In the mighty name of Jesus, be made whole from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be made whole. Hallelujah. Be made whole. The blood of Jesus make thee whole. The blood of Jesus makes thee whole from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be whole in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, and in your spirit. Every shackle be broken now. Every wall come down in your life now. Joy of the Lord come forth. Peace of the Lord come forth in Jesus' mighty name. And whatever that be, that's those special prayer requests. We're standing and we're touching and we're agreeing with those requests now in Jesus' mighty name. Be it so. Be it so. Be it every wall down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And those things that we need to pray, that the things that we don't know how, we pray that the Holy Ghost will intercede in those areas in Jesus' mighty name. We commit this unto the Lord Most High, and it is so. It is so. It is so. Because your eyes is upon the righteous and your ears is open to that cry that whenever the righteous cry, you hear it and you deliver it out of all their troubles. The angel of the Lord encampers round about them that fear him and delivereth them. And we thank you, mighty God, because your word declared it to a thousand shall fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand. It won't come nigh us. We'll see it with our eyes, but it won't happen to us. We thank you. Let, let it be our passion always to be in your secret place. We thank you for the miracles today. Thank you for the healings today. Thank you for the breakthrough today. And even now, as we're touching and agreeing, because your word said we're in to touch and agree, you would give it us. If we would stand touch and agree, you would give it us. And we believe your word. We stand upon your word. We claim it done in Jesus' mighty name. And it is so. Hallelujah. It is so glory. It is so mighty God. Thank you. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for breakthrough this day. Thank you for deliverance this day. Thank you for change of heart, change of mind, change of spirit, change of soul. Unmeasurable is your love. Unmeasurable is your goodness. Unmeasurable. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty Father, that you love us that much. You give us access. And it is, it is, it is your will to give us the kingdom. And we thank you for that, mighty God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you that whenever the righteous cry, you hear it and deliver us from all their trouble. Thank you for victory today. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. And it is so. so again, go in peace. Enjoy the blessings of the Lord. He is for you. And it brings in pleasure when God's children operates and God's children began to utilize those gifts, those ability healing the children's bread, and it brings God's pleasure whenever we operate upon his word. We take those things that rightfully belongs to us that he's already paid the price for. Christ paid the price for it all. He was the one that poured out his soul and the death was numbered with the transgressions, buried the sins of many, and interceded for the transgressors. That's the kind of unmeasurable love that Christ has for us. And 
Jesus went far enough to say, evil fathers know how to give good gifts to their kids, and how much more the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask. Scriptures stated in Luke 18 and 1 about always to pray and not to faint. And there are times we won't feel like praying. I can attest that some of my greatest breakthroughs and healing was when I didn't feel like praying. And I had to admit that to the Lord. Lord, here I am. I don't feel like praying. I really don't even know what to say. I know I love you. And when those words left my tongue, the Holy Spirit intercede began to pray and began to enter act in things that I didn't know how to say. One of the greatest breakthroughs, normally 10 minutes of prayer and I'm about done, but this was so awesome and beautiful. Three and a half hours later, after I was done praying, I thought I had only prayed 15 minutes and it's something unique to be in God's presence. And it's available to all of God's children. God has no respect of person. It is true you draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh unto you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Whatever you do, continue to stand when you've done everything. And so Jesus said it best. In 18 and 1, you ought to always pray and not to fail. God blessings. Love you. Until next time, go in victory, go in peace, go in love. In Jesus' name.